Hello Year 5, it's our last lesson of this week and now we're looking at adding fractions that have different denominators. So we've done when the denominators are the same, when we're adding apples and apples. Now we need to think about when we've got denominators that are different. And I've got a question on the board that is a quarter adds a seventh and they're represented for us pictorially as well. The smaller the denominator, so my four here, actually means you get a bigger share of whatever you're splitting or sharing. So can you see that this quarter, this red quarter here, is a lot bigger than the seventh you would get? Because it, it, it would make sense, because if you're cutting something into four, they're going to be bigger pieces. When if, you, if you're cutting the same thing into seven, each of those sevenths is going to be smaller. So sometimes you can visualise that and you can think, right, if that denominator is small, it's actually a bigger portion of the fraction. Or the other way around, if the, denom the bigger the denominator the smaller the portion you're going to get. So, you need to find the smallest common multiple of 4 and 7. And I've got the options of 14, 28, 8, 12 and 21. Now, smallest common multiple is simply a number that is in both the 4 and the 7 times tables. So, can you spot one along the bottom? And you should be able to tell me that 28 is in both. And that was the smallest one we could get. So we need to put both of these fractions, one quarter and one seventh, into 28. So, again, what do we do? We're working out this question, this red question mark here. So we're working out the numerator of our one quarter. So if I do four times seven to get 28, what do I need to do to my one numerator up here? I need to do the same, which is 1 times 7. So my numerator is going to be 7 for that. So 1 quarter is the same or equivalent to 7 28ths, just like that. Now we're moving on to our 7th. So let's look at the denominators. I know that 7 times 4 is 28. So if I did that to the denominator, what do I need to do to the numerator? And that is the same. I need to do 1 times 4. So and that is going to give me 4. So what we've done here is we've put 1 quarter and 1 seventh into, found the lowest common multiple, and now they've got the same denominator, so we can compare them a lot more easily. So if you're offered 7 of something or 4 of something, which, which is the bigger one? And we should know that already from our picture, that 7 28 is bigger. But... What do we also need to remember when the denominators are the same, when we're adding fractions? And that is we can just add the numerators. So what is 7 add 4? And it is 11, thinking of our number one. 7 add 3 is 10. I've got one more, so it would be 11. So they've added all of the 28s to give us a total of 11 28s, just like that. We'll do one more like this together, and then we'll move on to some non-unit fractions. So, I've got one-sixth and a quarter. Pause the video if you want to try and find the lowest common multiple yourself, or watch along with me to know how to do it. So, first, lowest, smallest common multiple, or lowest common multiple of six and four. I've got 16, 30, 24, 12, and 20. Now, 16 goes into the four times tables, but not in the sixes, so I can disregard that. 30, I know, goes in the sixes, but I don't think it's in the fours. 24, ah, four times six is 24, which therefore means it's in the four times tables as well. So I'm going to go, wasn't my 24. 12, two times six is 12, oh, and three times four is 12. Can you all see... So we went, I went for 24, but it wanted the lowest common multiple. So you don't want to go too high. You don't want to pick a big number that you, when you don't have to. So yes, you, I might have found 24 and I'm like, yeah, it goes in both. But there was a smaller number available. Okay, Just wanted to keep that in there to show you the process when you're trying to find that lowest common multiple. So now we are putting both one sixth and a quarter into twelfths. So... What do we do to 6 to make 12? And we know that 6 times 2 is 12. So we're going to do the same to my numerator. So 1 times 2, which is going to give us 2. 1 sixth is equivalent to 2 twelfths. Let's move to our quarters. 4 times what is 12? 
four times what is 12? And the answer is three. So I did that for the denominator, so I need to do it for the top number as well. So one times three is going to be three, like that. So now what we're actually adding, because we've made them both into twelfths, so we've made them the same, we can now add the numerators like normal. We can ignore the denominator. So I've got two, add three, which is going to be five. So the answer should be five twelfths if we've added our two over here, our three there. But remember, our original sum was a six add a quarter, but we found equivalent fractions, so it is still the same answer, okay? Right, let's try uh, subtracting. Let's do a couple of subtraction ones. So, it wants you to subtract one fifth, take away one seventh. Now, again, we've got apples and oranges here. We've got different denominators. So first, we need to find that common multiple. What number of the ones at the bottom appears in both the five and the seven times tables? And I'm looking, I've got 10, 35, 14, 15, and 21. Now, because we've got fives, I know it has to end in a zero or a five. So I can disregard my 14 and my 21. Got 10, 35, and 15. Is 10 in the seven times tables? No. Is 15 in the seven times tables? It's close, but it's not. So that would leave me with 35 as my lowest common multiple. Pause the video now. See if you can convert these into equivalent fractions by yourself. All you're thinking is whatever I do multiply the denominator by, I have to do the numerator this with this by the same number. Okay. So, for my fifth into 35, 35ths, I need to think, five times what is 35? And I know that is seven. So I need to do one times seven to work out the numerator, which is going to give me seven. So one fifth is equivalent to seven 35ths. 35ths, sorry. Now, over here, what do I multiply seven by to get 35? And it's all about that family of number sentences, isn't it? I don't need to work out anything new because seven times five is gonna be 35. So now one times five is going to be five. So one seventh and five thirty-fifths is equivalent. So now the sum that I'm doing has the same denominator. So when we're subtracting, I can ignore it, just like when we're adding fractions. And all I'm doing is seven, take away five, I'm looking at the numerators. So seven, six, five, four, three, two going to leave me with two thirty-fifths. Now that is a small fraction. They're quite small anyway, our thirty-fifths. Can you see? Now you're only getting two of them. And that is the right answer. We'll do another takeaway. Pause the video now and have a go yourselves and then join back in when you're ready for the answer. So, I've got a half and a quarter. They're shown pictorially for us, but what is the lowest common multiple of 2 and 4? And I've got, I think I've got 8, 12, 4, 16 and 10. It wants the smallest, the lowest common multiple. So I'm going to go with 4. And I was right. And what should we know? What is a half in quarters? We need to start knowing these. Just thinking, ah, oh, half, if there's four of them, that means there's going to be 2 in a half. So... A half is equivalent to two quarters. I wasn't even going to work that out with my time, with my multiplying because that is one of the relationships you just need to know. So now it wants one quarter into quarters. Now that's a bit of a trick question because it already is in quarters. So we're going to keep that as one quarter. So sometimes you don't have to change both fractions. Sometimes it's already given you a common denominator. One of them is a common denominator. You just have to convert one of the fractions. So now I'm looking at two quarters, so my two here. If I take one away, what am I going to be left with? And the answer is one quarter. So we've taken that off and we get our one quarter left. So on the board I've got four sevenths add two fifths. So we should know this by now. When the denominators are different, we need to find that lowest common multiple and convert or change both fractions or one fraction, depending on the question. So what is a number that is in both the seven and the five times tables from the bottom? 
14, 35, 10, 21 or 15. Again, I've got my five, so that gives me a clue that the, my answer can only end in a five or a zero. So, no, it can't be you or you, but I've got 35, 10 and 15. Is 15 in the seven times tables? Nope. Is 21 in the seven times tables? Oh, it's not. Can't be 21. It doesn't end in a zero or a five. 10. Is 10 in the seven times tables? No. Which leaves us with 35. Pause the video, see if you can work out these equivalent fractions, and then join back in to see the answer. So, four sevenths in 30 fifths. Seven times five is 35, so I've got to do four times five, which is 20. So just over half, you can see half of my circle. And five times what is 35? Five times seven is 35. So I need to times by two, my numerator here by seven as well. Two times seven is 14. Now we've got our fractions with the same denominators. We can add them like normal. So I've got 20, add 14. So I'm gonna partition, I'm gonna 14, I'm gonna start with 14 and add 20 so I can count up in my tens because that's a lot easier in my head. So 14 add 10 would be 24, but I'm adding 20, so 24 add 10, 34, that would get me. So 34, 30 fifths, or 34 out of 35. Who wants to take a guess while this is loading of what that's going to look like? 34 out of 35. You're gonna nearly have a hole, aren't you? You've only got one piece missing or not one piece uh, accounted for. Adding all, right, so we've added all of those. Now we're adding all of those on. Oh, three quarters. Keep going, keep going. And there we go. There's our nearly, nearly whole. It's not quite a whole, but it is nearly one whole. What if you were subtracting non-unit fractions? So on the board, I've got the question, three fifths take away a half. So we've got apples and oranges. We need to make them the same for us to be able to take them away. So lowest common multiple of five and two so let's think can't be eight can't be six we need to, can't be 25 because we're looking at two so we need an even number so i'm going to go with 10 because that's the smallest one excellent so five times what is 10 five times two so we're going to do three times two and three fifths becomes six tenths and they are equivalent they mean the same and a half What's a half in tenths without even working out? You don't even, shouldn't even need to do any calculations. What is a half if you've got 10 slices or 10 pieces to share? How many are you gonna get if you split those in half? And that's right, it's gonna be five. Five tenths is equivalent to a half. So we're now doing six tenths take away five tenths or six take away five. What's that gonna leave you with? Just one, just one tenth left over. And you can see I've got my six here, taking off the five, and it's gonna leave me with one tenth, okay? So now we've done a bit more practice with adding and subtracting fractions, you can apply that knowledge to a puzzle, and you might sometimes get these addition pyramids to solve. And all you need to remember with addition pyramids is that these two bricks add together to make the brick above. Does that make sense? So if we are adding these two bricks to make that one, I've got four twelfths, add two twelfths. What's that gonna be? Four twelfths, add two twelfths. That's gonna be six twelfths. Now, now I'm moving on to doing these two to give me this one. So I've got two twelfths, add two twelfths, two add two is four. Well, the denominator stays the same because it is the same for both fractions. Now I've got, now this will depend on if you've got the right answer because now you're adding your two answers. So I've got six twelfths, add four twelfths to make my top brick up here. So six add four I know is 10 and my denominator stays the same. So that pyramid is now complete. We've added them all together. Pause the video, have a go at the middle one. 
and then check back in to see the answer. So I've got two nights, add one night. I know that's going to be three nights. And I've got one, add three, which is going to be four nights. And then three, add four, four, five, six, seven, seven nights like that. Well done if you got that right. And the last one, I've got some missing ones. We might have to bring in some of our subtraction. Pause the video and have a go or watch me go through it. So we know that the two bricks underneath add together to give the brick above. But we've got a missing, not answer if you like, because we've got in this brick wall, two eighths add something equals three eighths. Now, when we've got missing number number center, missing numbers in our questions like this, what do we need to use to help us? And that's right, we need to use the inverse. So the inverse of adding fractions is going to be subtracting fractions. So what I need to do is I actually need to do three, three eighths, take away two eighths to work out that missing one. So if I've got three of something and someone takes away two, I'm going to have one eighth left over. And we could put it back in our question to check it. Does two eighths add one eighth equal three eighths? Yes, it does. Well done. So now using the one eighth that we've put in, we can work out this brick here. So I've got one eighth, add two eighths. It's going to give me another three eighths. Good. And what about that top brick? Three eighths, add three eighths. It's going to be six eighths. Now, on your worksheet, you have some addition pyramids to do as well, but the denominators are different. It is exactly the same process that we were doing at the beginning of the video. You have to just make them all have the same denominator. So they are all common and they can all be added together or take or subtracted easily. Have a go at today's worksheet and I'll see you next week.